All right, in coffee cup calorimetry, or constant pressure um, calorimetry, which is sort of the process that we've been doing here a second, um, the last two problems, you have a very simplistic setup. Uh, you basically have two styrofoam cups. One is an insulator for the other. The inner styrofoam cup is acting as the reaction vessel. And inside of it, you usually have a solution, one or more solutions, sometimes a solid. But the reaction is occurring in solution inside of the inner cup. You have something to stir it with so that you don't have you know, hot spots or cool spots within the cup. And then you have a thermometer that's measuring um, the temperature of the solution, which is generally considered to be the surroundings of the reaction or the surroundings of the universe. It usually also has a lid. Uh, what's kind of cool about coffee cup calorimetry is that it uses a very simple idea, much like we were just doing for the coffee and the aluminum, that the energy change or the enthalpy change or the heat change of the reaction is equal but opposite in sign to the heat change for the solution. So this is kind of like your system versus your surroundings. <clears throat> and really it's, it's actually a very remarkable um, setup which is kind of neat uh, of how accurate it actually ends up being. This is how most of our enthalpy values were determined, either with coffee cup or bomb calorimetry, which we'll do later. All right, these questions are a little bit challenging, um, but they will be something that you'll do similar to what you'll do in lab. So here's how this starts off. Take a second to read over the question. If you're not finished reading, you can pause it and keep going. Um, the first part of the question asks us what mass of solution is actually present. So to get the mass of the solution, we know that we're going to need grams of the solution total. And in this particular case, we have two solutions. We have 200 milliliters of an HCl solution. And we also have 200 milliliters of an NaOH solution. So here and here. The temperature of the solutions when before mixing is given to us. After mixing, also given to us. So we can get a delta T from that. Assume the densities of all solutions are one gram per milliliter. Oh, that's helpful. because that just gave me a way to get from volume to mass. So to get the mass of solution present, I'm going to take each of my possible options, my HCl, 200 milliliters of HCl, times one gram per milliliter, gives me 200 grams of HCl. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for my NaOH, one gram per milliliter. And very simply, the total mass of solution present at that point, I've added both of these volumes or now masses together. So my solution has 200 grams plus 200 grams equals 400 grams of solution. Okay. The second thing we're going to look at is the amount of energy produced during this reaction. So in the quantity of heat, that's Q. So when I see Q, I'm thinking, okay, I've got a scenario where I'm dealing with energy exchange. Because I'm dealing with energy exchange, I'm hoping that I'll be able to use Q equals MC delta T. So I'm going to go back into my equation and see what I, or my um, introduction, see what I can find. Q is what I'm looking for. I calculated the mass in part A because I'm dealing now with the mass of the overall solution. C, I'm going to go back up in here and read again. Volume, concentration, volume, 
temperature, temperature, density, and that their specific heat capacities are that of water. There it is. So if the specific heat capacity is the same as that of water, that's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then finally, my delta T would be T final minus T initial. Go back up to my beginning. The temperature of the solutions before mixing was 25.1 and after was 26.6. So there's my delta T. I can solve this problem, plugging it into my calculator. But of course I'm having trouble sitting here doing it now while I'm trying to do a video. Alright. And I got 2510.4. Looking at my units again here, grams on the top versus grams on the bottom that cancels. Degree C, degree C, that leaves me with joules. So if I was trying to do sig figs here, I would want um, probably only three because my initial value for my mass only had three. So 2,510 joules. The final part of the question asks us, what quantity of heat is produced on neutralizing one mole of the acid? So what we have to consider up here is this is the quantity of energy that was produced by mixing some quantity of acid. So if we consider the equation NaOH plus HCl yields H2O and NaCl. We can see that everything is a one-to-one -one ratio and that's great. What we started with was 200 milliliters or 0.2 liters of 0.4 molar HCl and 0.2 liters of question mark molar NaOH. But that's okay, we don't really need it because we have enough information here with the HCl. What this will give us is this will tell us how many moles were used. So that's the first thing that I need to do for part C here. I need to figure out the number of moles used so that I can figure out the number of joules or kilojoules per mole. All right, so the moles used in the original equation, we had 0.2 liters of 0.4 moles per liter, which gives me 0.08 moles. That would represent both the acid that was being used and because this is a neutralization reaction and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the same amount of acid was used as base. Acid base. That means in part B I calculated, this is the last part of it I promise, I generated 2,510 joules by neutralizing 0 0.08 moles of acid. So again, I'm using my units here to help me figure out what I want. I generated that much heat from that many moles. So as I divide the two, 2510 divided by 0 0.08, I get 31,375 joules per mole or you can change that if you want to. We want sig fig so we can really only have three. We should have had zeros after our eights here. We could have calculated that. Um, but three sig figs in the end. So 31.4 kilojoules per mole. I would suggest that you maybe try to go back and work this problem again on a separate sheet, maybe without guidance and see if you can kind of muddle your way through it. 
Um, there are many, many, many different types of calorimetry problems. So I've given you a few examples. Sorry it was so long.